Hi, how's life? Today I am in Woking, about to go and watch Bedknobs and Boomsticks, the musical, as you can see the sign is just behind me. Cannot wait, it stars people like Diane Pilkington, one of my favourite performers. We're at the station now, come along on the journey. So, as you might be able to see, we do have the new Victoria Theatre behind us, or the Ambassadors Theatre group. I'm here with my lovely friend Marie who will be joining me this evening. Are you excited about seeing this musical? So excited. Yeah, I mean it's a Disney classic and uh, it's the first time they've turned it into a musical, a stage on stage musical. I think it only opened the tour a couple of months ago so it's still quite new. It's kind of almost like a world premiere and you know we are very very honoured to be seeing it. I feel very honoured. <laughs> very honoured. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's go in. So as you can see, this theatre is rather modern looking. I've been to this theatre a few times over the past few years. It's one of the closest uh, touring venues to me. I live in London, so when touring productions don't come to London, they normally either come here or Wimbledon. Uh, but it's been a few years since the last time I was here. It looks like they're checking something here. Hopefully it'll be COVID passes. We'll have to see. So we've just entered the theatre. They did actually check our NHS um, vaccination passes, which I thought was good. Um, obviously also bag checks and ticket checks. We are in the front row in the stalls, which is... Marie found it, it's just over there, but what's the time, we've got like half an hour yeah, ages, yeah. I'm not used to normally being so early, so we might have a look at the merchandise and see what's available in the theatre, and uh, yeah, the half an hour before the show starts. We've just come to the second floor of the new Victoria Theatre, here in Woking, and as I mentioned earlier, it does look like a pretty modern venue, like with the staircases, they've got some nice seating areas here, bars and everything, um, I think there's toilets over there, that's the main bar on the other side as you might be able to see it. They do also obviously have some hand sanitizers everywhere so that's good. Um, there's one just here. Love the purple, <laughs> purple floor as well. Um, that's where we need to go later. I'm still looking uh, for some merchandise. We haven't found one on this level so we might have to go another level up for that. So we've come another level up and still can't find any merch but they do sell programs here which I will definitely get myself one. Um, I'm probably going to get one at the end of the show. But yeah, still no actual merchandise. It might just be that they're only selling programs here and not anything else, which I don't mind. We have finally found the little merchandise stand. It was on the very, very top floor in the foyer area. So we were close to it, but we just didn't see it. We went back down and then we saw a sign that said, go all the way up to the foyer to see it. So I'm just going to show you the merchandise now. So there you go, some fancies and fineries. Bet Nubs and Boom 6 and Musical, official merchandise available. They have a tote bag, which is cute. Hello, how are you? Um, a t-shirt. That looks appealing for sure. Might have to come for that. Um, they are selling. Oh, magnets. That's sweet. I love that. Love the keychain as well. A pin. Disney pins are a big thing in musicals these days. And the mug. The mug looks pretty cool as well. So. Oh yeah, and also this t-shirt here. I guess it's a children's t-shirt. Maybe because they've got an adult version over there as well. So yeah, quite a lot of good things. I thought they would be selling merch because it's a Disney musical and Disney loves selling quite a lot. And these are some of the prices. If you're wondering, I might come back later and maybe get myself a pin or a magnet. Depends on how much I love the show. Right, it is time. It's about seven, I can't even see it. It's about 7.25, so the show should start technically in the next uh, five minutes or so. So we are gonna go into the auditorium now. I'll just follow you. Oh, fun! So this is the auditorium. We are in the very front row, which is exciting. Well, A, I believe, somewhere in the middle. Um, so I'm just gonna follow Marie. I've given her the tickets so she can lead. Shall we? Thank you very much. So we have just got into our seats. <laughs> Marie, you're yeah, talking to me. Great view the front. It is actually a really yeah. good view. Um, leg room's not too bad either. Um, A16 and 15, I think, were yeah. the stalls. I'll show you the view in a second. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so they've just um, closed the curtains, I'm guessing, to get ready for the show. But you would have seen the bed earlier. Uh, this is the orchestra behind, not behind us, in front of us as well. This is the kind of leg room situation that we have. It's honestly not bad. It's, back. it's really, really. Oh, oh it's back! <laughs> <laughs> they just wanted to look, do a little check, I guess, with the knob. Coach. The what? The knob. Oh, <laughs> yeah, probably. Anyway, so this is the view um, of the famous beds and everything else. This is the theatre, as you would have seen. Uh, the show will start soon, so I will speak to you uh, at the interval. As you probably can tell from the little scene behind me, how are you finding the show, Marie? It's really magical. It is very yeah. magical, isn't it? It's more magical than I thought it would be. Like it's, I'm very much 
like the past hour and a bit just I think it's been an hour and a, yeah an hour and 15 minutes just went by like this very magical I love what they've done with some with the sets as well the cast is fantastic Diane Pilkington is a joy to watch she is phenomenal I am just so excited it's only the interview and I yeah, yeah. yeah. Marie and Marie going to performance yeah. yeah she really is fantastic and and honestly, already I low-key want to come back at some point. The tour is continuing. <laughs> <laughs> the tour is going. Also, yeah. I just noticed your blue hair low-key kind of matches. Oh, yeah. oh. How amazing I'm is Marie's blue hair? Yeah. I love her hair. as well. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> We're all matching. I'm just wearing a blue. Anyway, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> and it feels very odd filming right now because it feels like we're on the front row it feels like we've got like we literally are performing to an audience so I'll show you what I'm seeing it's, it's a bit awkward there you go <laughs> right I'm gonna go out we're gonna go on a little walk maybe just to mm, stretch our legs, legs yeah because yeah. as much as it's great to be front row the what do you call it the um, Leg room isn't the best. It's all right. It's not like, oh, I hate it, but it's just not phenomenal either. We've just come on the little wander around the theatre. Marie's just in the queue at the bar to get herself something. I'm not sure what. Maybe some chocolates. I don't know. Um, I've only taken my mask off momentarily because there's no one around me at the moment. In terms of mask wearing, actually, if you're interested, I would say about 40% of the audience, from what I can gather, are wearing masks. 60% aren't. But at least we all got checked in terms of the COVID thing. I don't know. I always like to mention it just in case any of you are still hesitant about going to theatre. I'm feeling quite safe at the moment. I'm going to put the mask back on though. Um, yeah, the show is incredible. I did not expect to love it as much as I did because the film, believe it or not, is not one of my favourite Disney films. I only watched it, I think, for the first time back in 2015 actually, so not even as a child. I never watched it as a child properly. I watched it in full as an adult for the first time. Uh, but the stage show is just magical. I, I love Disney and what they do with their stage shows. Obviously, I saw Frozen a couple of weeks ago and now I'm here and they have done a phenomenal job. Obviously, I'm going to talk a bit more about everything once I get home. But so far, it's only the interval. And as I mentioned earlier, I genuinely do want to come back and see it again. Hopefully, I will get a chance. Um, hopefully, it might come to London, like at one point, to the West End. That would be great. But yeah, we have really good seats as well. I'm so happy that we're on the front row because even though we're on the front row, we still can't work out the magic, to be honest. Like, it's that good. And I love that. I was talking to somebody, one of my viewers, actually. Um, shout out to you. I, didn't, I forgot your name. I am going to try and remember it and mention it later on but yeah um, we were talking about the show and he asked me if um, if we could see the the tricks from the front row because he's a few rows behind us and we honestly can't and I don't want to I like the fact that I can't tell what's going on I think that really keeps the magic going so the show is going to start again Marie is just ordering so perfect timing Marie is back with some lovely chocolate buttons thank you very much <laughs> Right, we're gonna go back in now. Yum, yum, yum. We are back in our seats with our chocolate buttons. The show is gonna start in, I think, two minutes, so I'll speak to you later. has just finished the lighting is bizarre it looks phenomenal on Marie's or well, not not right now no, no, not if you come here come here no, this, this Please. Okay, I got it. you kind of have it <laughs> um, the show was fantastic it really really was um, I nearly even cried I teared up nearly at the end I didn't expect to loads of cute puppets as well puppets, in act two yeah. that I did not expect we love puppets in this house it was so good it's so, so well done though yeah. the bird I love the bird I love the bird yeah. um, the Bear, lion? Yes, the lion. Is it lion? Or like yeah, the king guy? The king guy. Yeah. He was quite fit. Oh my god. Quite fit anyway. Initially, I was terrified of him, but then I was but like, then. Yeah, I was like, you're mm. quite good looking for an animal. It's been a long lockdown, hasn't it? It has been a very long lockdown. Right, let's go get a program. So, just got my uh, theatre program as well as a couple of other things which are in this bag now, and I'll show them to you maybe when I get home. But um, yeah, we're exiting the theatre from a different exit now than who we came from. This is it. Interesting. Um, There's a cinema down there. There is a cinema there. This theatre, this walking place is, is interesting. Wow. I'm still, I feel like on a cloud, not even nine, I'm, I'm on cloud 12. What cloud are you on? Um, <laughs> 11 and a half. 11 and a half. 
Lordy. If you didn't know, uh, working in the Victoria Theatre is actually attached to the shopping centre. And I'm, they're doing some work, so obviously that's why I can hear some noise. Oh, Lordy. But apparently there's also a way out here, as well as a car park. So that's why we're using this way of leaving the theatre instead of coming down the main entrance that we came through earlier. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> so we're just leaving the the mall the town mall the shopping center peacock's shopping center and <laughs> there's a giant woman here and momentarily obviously marie was a bit freaked out by it, and then she mentioned it to me and for a second i also was like oh my god but but it's not real i'm curious to see her face now <laughs> she's rather too tall she's like oh she's tall sugar i mean fair oh Oh, <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, fat face. There you go. That's where she wants to be. This is our lovely new friend. <laughs> Did you enjoy the show, um, Melanie? It looks a bit like she didn't. <laughs> I'm not sure about it. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> we're going to leave. So now that we've um, gotten over our fear of random statues, there's another one actually. I don't even know if you can see it. There. Oh, there, there, there. You probably yeah. didn't see it, it's okay. It is quite <laughs> weaky because it's just that there. Um, but yeah, uh, Marie, did you enjoy the show? I did, I really enjoyed it. I loved it as well. Any mm -hmm. particular highlights? Um, I liked her song when she was on the beam stage. Yeah, as well. that was I a good one. Her favorite song. <laughs> the scene in act one, where when she first tries to kind of get on the broomstick. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's so funny. That was really good, yeah. I don't know, I what, the, the I don't know what the actual song name is. Oh, I mean, we've got the program, so I'll, um, oh, yeah. there it is. Um, so I'll obviously go through it later on with you. Um, act two was very puppet heavy, wasn't it? Yeah, we there was like puppets, no puppets yeah. in Act one, and suddenly <laughs> they appear. Oh, there was a couple of puppets in Act one. I'd yeah, on it as well, yeah, the, like a rabbit. <laughs> Puppetry is done phenomenally. Fantastic mm. cast, really clever like sets as well. Uh, great, great, um, costumes were great costumes. Really cool. The Portobello Road scene. For yeah. sure, for sure. The Portobello Road scene was quite that fun was as great, well, yeah. with the whole ensemble kind mm -hmm. of being on stage. But anyway, um, I'm going to talk a little bit in more detail when I get home, when I'm uh, a little bit more like coherent, because I feel like at the moment I'm just like, Ugh! and that's <laughs> that's not really understood. So <laughs> thank you so much to Marie for accompanying yeah, me tonight. Thank you. Um, you'll probably see her in future vlogs, maybe. Um, maybe not. You never know. You're going to have to subscribe to find out. <laughs> I'll speak to you when I get home. So, I am back from the show now. It's quite late at night. 2.30 in the morning, to be precise. I uh, didn't get home until about 1am, obviously getting the train back and everything. Um, the show. I do want to talk a bit more about the show because I feel like earlier in the vlog... I don't know, I was just I was just throwing words at you without properly um, thinking about what I wanted to say. The show is magical. The show is fantastic. And as somebody who's not even the biggest fan of the actual film, so the Disney film with Angela Lansbury, I only have watched it maybe once or twice, like in full. And it was never really a big part of my childhood. I was more into Mary Poppins and all the other kind of Disney animated films rather than the live actions with animation. For some reason, Bed Knobs and Brooms just wasn't something that I particularly cared about as a child and when I watched it for the first time as an adult about five six years ago there's actually a vlog of me watching it for the first time on here believe it or not I still didn't fall in love with it maybe it was because I watched it as an adult for the first time I don't know basically what I'm trying to say is that I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of the film even though I love Disney Bed Knobs and Broomsticks has never been one of the kind of well-loved films for me in particular however I loved the musical I loved the stage show and as far as I can tell and remember um, the stage show is somewhat different to the film version. It definitely felt shorter, even though I'm pretty sure it probably was around the same uh, length. Uh, it felt shorter probably because I was enjoying it more. I found it more magical. I just love theatre anyway, but um, I'm pretty sure they definitely had changed bits of it. Um, I couldn't tell you exactly what because I don't remember the film very well and I haven't watched it in years but it didn't feel exactly like the movie so it definitely still had the magic of the movie and i think if you're a fan of the film you definitely won't be disappointed in the musical but it still was quite different as well in my opinion it's beautifully done it really is a beautifully done show um the magical elements of it are just phenomenal i 
can't even explain to you like for me and my friend Marie it felt like we were there for two and a half hours uh, and we were completely engrossed in this magical world and it's a musical that is you know for kids as well and there were loads of kids in the audience and it was so lovely seeing their faces at the end or in the interval and seeing how excited they were I feel like this is a phenomenal show to take kids to especially for instance as their first you know professional stage production I think this is perfect but for me as well as an adult I still really enjoyed those couple of hours of being fully immersed into the magic and I really was completely immersed in the magic in those couple of hours I didn't think of anything else apart from this world that you know Bedknobs and Broomsticks characters are in and um, honestly what else can you ask for when you go see a show especially if you're watching a Disney show as I mentioned earlier in the vlog as well all the magic elements in the show are done phenomenally well like it just genuinely looks like magic it's incredible obviously if you take a step back and try to think about it you can probably guess what they're doing but I don't like doing that I don't like thinking too much about it and I think if you go and see the show as well try not to overthink what's happening just enjoy it enjoy the magic believe what you're seeing and go with it because that makes the show more special. The sets were fantastic, especially for a touring production, like some incredible set designs were going on on stage and I loved how they work. It was very, very clever how they transitioned, especially from the bedroom scene to other parts of the show. And I applaud the set designers, like really, really great sets costume department phenomenal loved every single costume that i saw on stage beautiful colorful magical it was just amazing the direction as well very good direction and choreography i'm gonna have a look at the program later on and mention everyone in the creative team as well but i enjoyed the direction i liked the choreography there's not a lot of choreography but the bits that were there, I thought worked very well for the type of show that this is. I loved the puppetry, and um, there's a lot of puppetry in Act 2 especially. There's a little bit in Act 1, but Act 2 features a lot of puppets, and I loved it. I thought they were done so, so well, and if you haven't seen the film, basically in the Disney film, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, there are some bits of it that are animated and the puppets were basically there in the stage show to do the animated bits if that makes sense and I thought that was done so so well I really enjoyed the puppetry very well done by the cast members who were controlling the puppets I believe them uh, as I said earlier in the vlog probably quite weirdly so that I enjoyed the the lion I think it's a lion anyway or the tiger or whatever he was quite scary but also quite good looking for an animal like and jokes aside these animal puppets were done so so well and so realistically that they genuinely added to the magic element of the whole show and I really believed them I really really did I believe that I was seeing a bird on stage a rabbit you know there's a bear as well there's quite a lot going on fish so kudos to all the performers who were working with the puppets a really really great job I guess that's more or less it in terms of the creative side of things the orchestra as well sounded beautiful and I was so happy to be sat on the front row because I could kind of see the orchestra at times as well and that's one of my favorite things when I go see musicals to be able to see the orchestra and to kind of be so close to them I could hear them so loudly they sounded gorgeous really enjoyed it and as I mentioned before I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of bed knobs and broomsticks which means that I'm also not the biggest fan of the music in bed knobs and broomsticks I think the music in it is fine like the songs are great they're decent but they're not amazing they're not some of my favorite Disney songs personally there are so many other Disney songs that I prefer. Even Mary Poppins, I think the songs in that are better than the ones in this film. However, whilst watching the show, I fell in love with the songs and I really, really hope that they record a cast recording of this production with this cast because I would listen to it over and over again. So if anybody's watching this, please, please do a cast recording. They deserve it. It's a fantastic cast, a great production. We want a cast recording. Now for the cast. <laughs> So this is my program that I got from the New Victoria Theatre in Woking and uh, of course one of the main reasons that I wanted to see this musical was Diane Pilkington who plays the role of Miss Price or Miss Eglantine Price if you want to be precise. This is Diane and she is I would say my favourite theatre performer of all time. Like I've been very very lucky to have seen her in so many shows. I first saw Diane in 2007, July of 2007 when I 
first one to see Wicked. She was my first Glinda and honestly ever since I've tried my best to follow her career in every single show that she's done. I've seen her in different concerts that she's done. I've seen her in basically every single show that she has done since Wicked apart from I think I missed her in Only Fools and Horses and the only reason I did was because while she was in that show I was also working in a theatre and I was very very busy almost every evening so I just didn't have the time to go and see shows as easy as I used to be able to um, because I was busy every evening more or less but to be fair that is actually a regret that I have because I feel like I still could have made the time but she was in the show for I think a short period of time and by the time I realized oh I, I can actually get some free time she she left the show but anyway the point is in the past 14 years or so of me knowing of Diane after I first saw her in, um, in Wicked I have seen her in so many different shows different musicals different styles of musicals different plays as well she's done a few plays and every single show I've seen her in she has been phenomenal in it genuinely phenomenal I mean I can't explain to you what a fantastic performer Diane is I feel like you won't understand it until you see her in a show like any show literally I've never seen somebody act through a song as well as Diane does she really feels every character that she plays she's naturally funny but she also knows how to show emotions very very well in more tender scenes that she plays I mean Diane is genuinely a phenomenal performer and I think there is a reason why I have said for the past 14 years that she's the best performer I've seen in theatre ever. It's because every time I see her, and like, tonight was the first time I'd seen her on stage in a couple of years, I would say. I can't actually remember the last time I saw her before tonight because as I said, unfortunately I did miss her in Only Fools and that was the last um, theatre show that she did. But yeah, I mean, she's done the 39 Steps, She Loves Me, Mamma Mia, um, <laughs> Young Frankenstein. Uh, honestly, her biography is phenomenal. And I hope she continues doing fantastic shows because she is just a legend in theatre. And in this as well, she was, of course, brilliant. She's got a beautiful voice that works so well with the songs from the show. She works really well with the kids in the show. I mean, the whole cast as well. She's got the funny elements of uh, Miss Price down to a T but also as I said she is so good at depicting the other side of Miss Price as well the kind of more motherly side the more caring side she is just a natural on stage there is not a single moment when Diane Pickington is on stage where she is not in character like if you just watch her throughout the whole show you'll get your money's worth just by watching her because she reacts to everything she is just a stunning performer I need to stop I mean as you can see I can literally go on and on about how great Diane is I think I even made a video a few years ago you could almost call it a video essay about why in my opinion Diane Pilkington is the best Glinda there's ever been in Wicked so if you want to watch that I'll leave it down below it was from like five six years ago so I was much younger myself anyway moving on from her um Charles Brunton played the role of Mr Brown and that is him um I think I might have seen him in a few shows before he was in uh Love Never Dies I believe it says here he's also done the Beauty and the Beast UK tour so that's pretty cool um yeah he was very good as well he had a great voice um good chemistry with Diane's character as well he was very charming in the role I enjoyed him um now I get to the kids so um the kids were played by two actual kids and then an adult Charlie the oldest child is played by an adult and uh Connor O'Hara is the performer who um, plays Charlie. I believe he's a recent graduate. It says here he only graduated in 2020. And honestly speaking, normally I'm not the biggest fan of adults playing children in shows. There's just something that never sits right with me. However, tonight with bed knobs and broomsticks, I felt like it kind of actually did work. I couldn't tell you why exactly, but Connor was definitely fantastic in the role of Charlie. Like you could really believe that he was a child and the eldest brother um, in the family. And yeah, there was just something about it with the two younger kids that, that made it work. I mean, I still don't think it's my favorite thing about the show. And honestly, if I could change one thing about it, it would be to have an actual child play the role of Charlie, but I understand why they've made this choice. Like, I understand why they have an adult playing him. It's just not my preference when it comes to musicals, but Connor did a fantastic job nonetheless. He's got a great voice and uh, yeah, his performance was moving. With the ensemble and the swings, I'm just gonna have to show you um, the cast list here because unfortunately, as much as I would love to, it would take me a long, long time to speak about every single one of them. But trust me, they were all very, very good. It was actually really fun to see Sam Lupton in the ensemble he also was one of the puppeteers he i first saw i think in avenue q many years ago but he was also bock in wicked but it makes sense to have him do some puppetry because obviously avenue q he played the role of princeton and rod so that's a lot of puppetry just in one show also rob madge 
uh, shout out to Rob Madge. So one of my viewers uh, who said hi to me in the interval, I forgot his name earlier and I felt so bad. So I went and found him and I asked him his name again, Joseph. Um, Joseph, it was lovely to meet you. And Joseph said he was actually in the audience to support his uh, former castmate, Rob Madge, um, who he was in a show with. So that was pretty cool. And Rob Madge was, was very, very good as well. The whole ensemble team were good. There's not a lot of ensemble moments, if I'm honest. And if there's anything I can say about the show is that the ensemble moments that do happen don't necessarily have the magical touch that they need to have if i'm completely honest with you like they were fun but i don't know like coming out of the show there wasn't a single big ensemble moment that you know is in my memory as like a highlight so i don't know i guess it's a bit difficult maybe they could have done a bit more with the ensemble numbers i don't know it's just something that i'm thinking about now in hindsight a couple of hours later but um oh god i do also want to give a big shout out to jackie dubois as mrs holiday sorry that i um didn't earlier she was fantastic as well she was so funny um and just a great great character on stage i really enjoyed uh the scenes that she was in for what it's worth the cast is quite diverse as well i mean it could be better but i think the fact that it's a disney show and disney has been very good in recent years to try and have a more diverse cast and creative team they've done a decent job with that so for our two children uh as in carrie and paul Tonight we had Sapphire Hagen, I believe, in the role of Carrie. So this was our Carrie for the evening over here, and she was great. She was a really, really great Carrie. I believed her completely. And then for the role of Paul, we had Aidan Otti, and he was also such a sweet, sweet performer. I really enjoyed his character. He had some funny lines as well that the audience really enjoyed. And yeah, they were a good team. Aiden, Sapphire, and of course, Connor, who plays their eldest brother. I just thought I'd show you the song list as well before <laughs> I close the program. Um, in case you're wondering. Like I said, I'm not the most familiar person with the film, so I can't tell you if there are any new songs in the show, but I feel like there probably were some new songs that weren't in the film anyway. Right, so the director is Candice Edmonds, so I just wanted to give a big shout out to her as well. Um, this is the creative team, and um, that's Candice. Um, I loved the direction. I thought the direction was spot on. I couldn't have changed it in any way, to be honest. I'm going to put the program away now. There aren't any photos or anything, by the way, in the program. And as far as I could tell, there wasn't like a brochure or anything where you could get pictures in either on sale. I might be wrong. Tonight was the press night, by the way. So tonight uh, was the press night for Woking, which means obviously all the local press would have gone to watch it tonight. So I feel very honoured to have been there on a press night as well. Um, I also got the magnet and the pin, so <laughs> this is the pin. Because I just enjoyed the show so, so much that I really wanted to have a few more things to remember it by. It's an official Disney pin, and you can tell by the fact that it's got a Mickey uh, back side. And then the magnet is actually quite big. It's a good magnet, though, I feel like. And it's just got the logo, bed knobs and broomsticks uh, on stage, the musical. And yeah, of course I got the program as well. I think all in all I paid about £14 for everything, which I don't think is a bad price at all. Anyway, I feel like I've been rambling on for a long, long time. Also, I do want to quickly mention that, as you would have seen, I only filmed the tiny bit of the curtain call, so I didn't do my usual thing of filming everything. Whenever I go and see shows and do these vlogs, I always make sure to either check with the, you know, ushers, the front of house people, or check online beforehand if I'm allowed to film or take pictures at curtain call and i did the same tonight as well in the interval i checked with one of the front of house team members who i think might have actually been a manager or a supervisor i asked him if it was allowed to take photos or videos at curtain call and he just said he wasn't sure he like he basically couldn't give me a straight answer he just said i'm not sure and i wasn't happy with that because if somebody tells me they're not sure i wasn't just gonna go for it and film it so later on in the interval i found another front of house team member and i asked them the same question again they didn't know they were like oh we don't we don't really know but this time around they said they would check for me and i don't really know how they checked but they came back after a while and said um they don't think uh that's allowed to take photos or film in the curtain call so that's why you didn't really see much of the curtain call anyway just thought i'd mention that because i always try and be as careful as i can when it comes to things like that i would never film a curtain call unless i'm absolutely sure i'm allowed to and because i just wasn't sure tonight i didn't film it so if somebody from bed and broomsticks is watching and can like confirm to me whether or not it's allowed if i go and see the show again at some point i'll know for sure if i'm allowed to film it or not because i just did what i thought was the best thing to do in terms of the couple of people that i'd, I'd 
class and they just told me they weren't sure i thought it's best just not to but obviously if i am allowed the next time i go i will of course film it for you and there will definitely be a next time i cannot wait to go and see the show again um it was such a magical show i want to take my mom to see it i want to go and see it again myself i know already a couple of my friends who are you know keen to go and see the show so i think as soon as it comes back down somewhere close to london i think it's going to dartford in a in a couple of months time and then i think southampton as well i don't know it's going all over the uk so go and check out the tour link actually because it will probably be coming somewhere near you and if it does come near you you need to go and watch it and if you have kids to go along with you definitely take them because they will absolutely love it it is a joy to see their faces it was a joy to see diane pilkington on stage but it was also a joy to see the kids around me enjoying the show so much so i had a fantastic night all round thank you to my friend marie as well for coming along with me we had a great time and thank you to you for watching i hope you enjoyed all my rambling follow me on instagram for more content subscribe to my channel for more videos and i'll see you in the next one bye bye